everyone uses the electric grid. The current policies shift the costs of maintaining the grid from solar homes to non-solar homes. I shouldn't have to pay for my neighbor's solar. A secure, reliable electric grid benefits all of us. Everyone who uses the grid should help pay for it. That's only fair. This was an advert by the EEI. It's a trade group that represents all investor-owned electric companies in the US. This ad was aired to publicly attack net metering policies that promote solar energy and they're only one of the many companies that are actively pursuing to stop homeowners from shifting to solar. Before we talk about how some of the biggest companies out there have tried stopping the growth of solar, let's understand why they are doing so. Solar energy has been around for decades, but only recently has it become affordable for common use due to the drop of prices in solar cells. Now, more than ever, because of rising global temperatures and growing awareness about the pollution crisis, many countries have introduced new laws and are taking measures to gradually shift to renewables. One would argue that this growing awareness and shift to cleaner energy is good news for everyone, right? Well, not quite. When you're up against an industry worth $200 billion annually, this shift is bound to make some people very unhappy. You see, to promote solar adoption, a net metering policy was introduced, which meant you can use solar to power your homes and sell any excess electricity to the grid for credits. Those same credits can be later used to buy back electricity during the night. This way, you're paying a fraction for your electricity and saving a fortune over the years. This policy paired with private solar installers like SolarCity offering installation at no upfront cost was so successful that millions of households made the leap to install solar panels on their rooftops because it seemed like the right thing to do, helping the environment while saving money. But here's the thing about capitalism. If something doesn't make money, no one will do it. Consumers shifting to solar meant that lesser people would pay to maintain the grid and this threatened the existing market in the long run. So to protect their business against the fear of losing their customers to solar, these utilities retaliated with full force. Starting with the Heartland Institute, which is a research organization backed by fossil fuel companies. They published papers trying to defame the solar industry and spread misinformation about the negative effects of solar, which caused mass confusion among early adopters. The institute also held conferences completely denying climate change and openly waging war on renewable energy by publishing a book called Dumb Energy, a rant against wind and solar. Following which First Energy, one of the largest electricity operators in the US, spent millions of dollars to lobby against renewable energy and forcing the governor to completely freeze the renewable energy standard in their state. The freeze, however, was lifted two years later, but by then the damage had already been done. Thousands of solar companies shut down as private investment in solar energy fell by over a hundred million dollars. And while all of this caused mass confusion and lack of clarity, policies were still being developed in many parts of the country when the EEI, Berkshire Hathaway Energies, We Energies and Koch Brothers stepped in and collectively spent over 200 million dollars to lobby against net metering policies and ran long TV commercials to influence public opinion. The worst of all, the Consumer Energy Alliance, a front representing companies like ExxonMobil, Chevron and Shell Oil even went to the extent to submit 2,500 fake signatures in support to increase the total bills of homeowners using solar. The irony here is that the ongoing fight to make you pay for the grid is funded by the same money you pay to maintain the grid. And there isn't a solution that can appeal to both sides. Even utilities like Duke Energy that take so much pride in deploying the largest solar parks in the country are behind the wheel to drive solar away from being affordable. By ensuring that the state does not allow third-party financing options because that affects their profits. Rooftop solar threatens the monopolies that are kept in business by corrupt politicians while they argue about the benefits of centralized production. But a consumer shouldn't be forced to pay for transmission losses and rising fuel costs while an alternative can provide them an unlimited source of energy right on their rooftops. Needless to say, the fossil fuel industry and the utility opposition has made an impact on the course of solar. Well-funded attacks like these on key solar policies are forcing the solar industry to spend resources fighting to survive rather than unleashing the next wave of clean energy innovation and deployment. Rooftop solar is slowly becoming a reality. And with increased efficiency, wider acceptance and improving battery technology, 
It's only a matter of time before these monopolies are a thing of the past.